For the Climate Discussion Nexus, I'm John Robson, and I hope you've watched our latest backgrounder, The Red-Green Menace, on the ominous convergence between the green vision of an energy-starved Western world by 2050 and the Chinese Communist Party vision of it dominating the globe in 2050 thanks to its huge military and carbon-fueled economy, compared to which pretty much anything in this readout video based on our Wednesday wake-up newsletter will be reassuring including the news that those carbon cycle cartoons made readily available by the NOAA and Wikipedia and that crowd are, uh, wrong. At least way more carbon is going down the river and into the sea than we thought, and if you look closely at those diagrams, the various numbers on them don't match, reminding us once again that the science is not settled, not even the part of it dealing with measurement. Nobody's out there counting CO2 molecules as they click past the factory chimney top, or get sucked into a plant leaf, or ooze out of a pile of rotting wood, or go down a river and out through the estuary. Just as nobody took the temperature of the Earth in 1880, or even in 1980, so they know to within a decimal place, or frankly to within a degree, what's really going on. And we could make the same point about econometrics. Even the major new Fraser Institute study on the economic impact of a $170 per ton carbon tax in Canada that said it would lower our incomes and destroy lots of jobs. Our Minister of Environment and Climate Change dismissed the findings on Twitter without having any apparent idea what they even were, including the finding that his own government is very dogmatic about its conclusions about its Green New Deal, despite not having even done a study, or if they did, certainly not having released it. So yes, it's possible to quibble with the finding of the Fraser study by University of Guelph economist Ross McKittrick and the Institute's Associate Director of Natural Resource Studies, Elmira Aliakbari, that if the federal carbon tax is raised as planned from $30 to $170 per ton over the next nine years, quote, we find that the federal carbon tax will cause a 1.8% drop in gross domestic product, which works out to about $1,500 in current dollars per employed person and the loss of over 184,000 jobs nationwide, end quote. And always at CDN, we're wary of that decimal place. But we're a lot more wary of a government that thinks that ceasing to use fossil fuels won't harm us economically, which depends upon the absurd notion that the benefits we think we gain from gasoline, natural gas, heating oil, and so on are trivial or even imaginary, and that we only buy these products because we're too dumb to notice they're not worth the money we spend on them. And speaking of money, NBC chirps that, quote, green groups launched $10 million ad campaign pressuring Biden, Congress to spend huge on climate, end quote. How much? If we skeptics even had $10 million total, let alone $10 million to blow on one PR campaign in cahoots with our political buddies, NBC would write a withering expose of big oil money. Instead, it's you go greens. And speaking of withering exposés, someone actually concluded that the Australian media are conspiring to cover up the climate crisis, which is why it's never in the newspapers except for being in them all the time. And our newsletter also talks about China's worst sandstorm in a decade hitting Beijing, an especially harsh blow given their already horrific air quality, and nobody blaming it on climate change, at least not yet. Whereas when last year's Saharan dust storm reached the Americas, it was blamed on climate change. Seems things are always different where China's concerned. Although before charging on, let me note in fairness that in 2020, the Atlantic ran a major piece in praise of dust storms, which is almost as brave as praising parasites. And then author Sabrina Imbler waxed lyrically that, quote, the Saharan dust cloud is a billowing ribbon of life-giving minerals, such as iron and phosphorus, that fertilize the most biodiverse oases on the planet, including the lush menagerie that is the Amazon rainforest. Sea creatures are also thirsty for the precious minerals of Saharan dust, end quote. Wow, you go dust. But you don't go terra carta. Prince Charles, who has waited a very long time for the throne once occupied by his distant ancestor, Bad King John, and in the meantime has adopted various causes dull and worthy, exotic and worthy, and occasionally misguided, just put forward an earth charter, supposedly modeled on the Great Charter of Liberties, that instead threatens our freedom and, with its soporific prose, our capacity to remain awake long enough to be worried. Also in the newsletter, our own scientists say feature contains yet another astounding claim, namely that there, are, quote, is overwhelming evidence that the planet has warmed during the past century. But could this warming be due to natural dynamics? Given what we know about the complexity, long-term persistence, and non-linearity of the climate system, it seems the answer might be yes, end quote. Yes, indeed. That's from a peer-reviewed paper back in 2005. And basically it says, if you look for trends in the wrong way and on the wrong timescale, you may hallucinate them. 
or, as those wacky lads and lasses in the lab like to put it, quote, the presence of LTP in a stochastic process can induce a significant trend result when no trend is present if an inappropriate trend test is used, end quote. LTP being long-term processes, and the point being, maybe the last century of warming is part of a long natural cycle with nothing to do with man-made CO2, scientists say. As they also say, courtesy of CO2Science.org, that while there's been a lot of doom and gloom about warming killing off anything nice, we really don't know whether birds in temperate climates grow better, worse, or no differently if it gets warmer. But, other scientists also say, thanks to CO2Science.org, we do know that general predictions about doom and gloom about warming turning the earth into a foul-weathered wasteland were wrong, and instead it has greened. And now we also know that predictions that Africa is still going to turn into that aforementioned wasteland in 80 years appear to be based on faulty models. So, there you have it. Climate change won't do us in, though the Chinese Communist Party might if we help them, which we should not. For the Climate Discussion Nexus, I'm John Robson, and I'm no watermelon.